Hi, in this segment we are going to see that how to make a basic program using Hibernate. Those who are aware of Hibernate knows that Hibernate is basically an ORM framework. So what we'll do is that we'll look into how to build a small program. Uh, we will do a basic mapping of our table to a Java world, basically a class. And then uh, we will use some basic APIs to interact with the uh, database. And we will uh, see that how Hibernate handles all this task. We'll basically follow what is in this block. So th this is pretty much what we are going to do here. So let's switch back and get the things rolling. So before we start, we need a database to work with. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start HSQL DB. It's a very, very, very nice database to work in the development environment. It's actually very powerful also. Uh, and it's very convenient to work with. So, and then it comes with a swing utility which helps us in connect to the database so just note the url here so that's what will help us to connect to the instance of the database that is running so now we can see that it is connected here there are no tables right now so now let's switch back to hibernate so i have got a program already created here it's a maven based application you can you can uh, download this from the github the link is there on the blog so to start with let's go to our mapping class so you see this this is a student class this is a very 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 straightforward java class and it has got certain attributes and then now we want to map this class to a table so how do we start with so we first say that we give say that it's an entity this annotation basically tells hibernate that this is basically a hibernate managed class and it will be mapped to a table called student if you don't give at the rate table then it automatically maps it to a table with name student but it's always a good idea to give it explicitly then let's see how we map other attributes the important one is the id attribute so we say that this is at the rate id this is basically your primary key and uh, then we say that it is mapped to a column student underscore id if you don't give this it will automatically map it to a id column and then you tell that how this the what is the uh, uh, what is the way to generate the primary key so in this case it is auto what it means is that it will basically use the incremental method so it will look into the max of the id for all the rows and give the next number to the new record then we can map uh, other attributes like age so we tell that it is mapped to a column called age and then you can put it uh, like this so we can say that the name is mapped to a column with name name we have a lot of names or if you don't want you can just rely on the default but again as a good practice is always a good idea to mention them explicitly it also increases the readability then look into how to configure hibernate for that there is a configuration file uh, which helps in a hibernate to boot up so the most important properties are basically the connection details so those who have worked with jdbc uh, can uh, clearly uh, see that uh, basically what we need is a driver class a connection url the username and the password so these are the standard properties that we need to connect to a database then the other important thing here is the mapping class so we are telling here to the hibernate that basically student is our uh, is an entity for us it will be managed by hibernate and it is the class which is mapped to a table in the database the other interesting property for this segment is this hbm to ddl dot auto where we are saying update so we are telling hibernate that if you don't find a table do create one for us this is good for development purpose you may not want to use it for production so once our configuration is in place let's look into this hibernate util which is basically a very standard boot, boot up class this will help us to create a session factory you can think of session factory as the core of the runtime of hibernate and uh, this is where this whole uh, everything about hibernate is you can manage it basically through this session factory so once all of these things are in place we are good to go let's look into how to run it in the main program so if you see here uh, we start with opening a session so we again go to session factory and ask it to give us a session 
you can think of session as a connection if you are working with JDBC then we ask it to basically begin a transaction boundary you can have many transaction boundary inside a session but uh, let, let's just have this transaction boundary being open here then we create one student object we set some name set some age and we ask the session to save it so this is how hibernate will basically persist this object into a record in the database we do it with another student object we give some name and age and again we save it comment and then we close the session so let me just run it in the debug mode i have put a breakpoint here so once it reaches there let's go and see uh, the state of our database so i'll refresh it so you see we have got a table created which has got student id age and name let me run a query So you see here, these are the two records that are created. Now let's proceed ahead. Now we open another session and open another transaction in the context of this new session. Let me go step by step. So here what I'm going doing is that I'm basically getting a student object, giving it one of the IDs. This is basically the second record. And I set a different name to it. Then I commit it and close it and then let's see that what happens just notice this name I'll we execute the name has changed it has changed to what I have updated it to however note that I have not called any update or any save or any persist method here and this is one of the very fundamental aspect of hibernate that you want to be comfortable with hibernate will basically manage the entities for you it will take care of if any changes are happened, it will be propagated to the database automatically. However, there are certain rules around them. So, but this is something very, very core of Hibernate. You want to be very, very comfortable with that. It's all about managing the entities in the Java world and making sure that whatever changes are happening to those entities are getting propagated to the relational world. That's why it's called object relational mapping. And then like a good programmer, a good practice, we shut down everything so that everything goes down. Uh, so we call this hibernate util.shutdown. I'll just run it. And that's where we will stop here.